Well, the title is fairly accurate. You want to get away from this movie. Is she alive? For now. She will remain that way as long as you follow my instructions. Drive. <laughs> I know who you are. You have a beautiful wife. And an ability few others have. Now I have you. I'm watching you. Always. You will await further instructions. Get out. You got the wrong car. Five. I need to be told that she is all right. Two. And when this is gonna be over. One. So it's been forever and a half since we've talked about a cheesy action movie on this show. So let's let's change that. Let's let's try and bring that back. Uh, unfortunately, we're not looking at some of the goofy action cheese from the 80s and 90s. We're looking at a 2013 action chase film called Getaway, starring Ethan Hawke, Selena Gomez, and the voice of John Voight. Though he used to race cars for a living, Brent Magna, played by Ethan Hawke, is now pitted against the clock in the most important race of his life. An unseen criminal, played by John Voight, has kidnapped Brent's wife, and to get her back, he must follow the man's instructions to the letter. Brent commandeers the ultimate muscle car, a custom Ford Shelby GT500 Super Snake, and with a tech-savvy young passenger, played by Selena Gomez, sets out on a high-speed chase to rescue his beloved. And to point out the, the stellar ratings that this movie got, we have 4.4 .4 out of 10 on IMDb, 3% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 22% on Metacritic. And I, I gotta say, that, that's, that's fairly accurate. At least it's an hour and a half and not almost two hours long. That's, that's something, right? So what this movie's trying to do is ride on the success of action movies that are coming out nowadays. Uh, specifically, it feels like it's trying to be a little bit of born identity, a little bit of taken, and it's especially trying to be like one of the Fast and Furious movies because this movie is nothing but driving. If anything, this movie is a solid example as to why you probably shouldn't road trip because you're just going to end up being in a car with people for too long. As for the plot, uh, Ethan Hawke plays a guy by the name of Brett Magna, which sounds like a 70s cop show character or a cheesy 80s action movie hero. In flashback, they establish he's married to this woman who's Bulgarian, and they say that, you know, she used to live there, and then she moved to the States, got together with him, eventually she went back. She goes back to Bulgaria, she gets taken by some guys who, they don't really specifically say that they're working for John Voight, but it's, it's heavily implied, I'll, I can take that at least. And during this flashback, you see Ethan Hawke go into his house, and doesn't really seem all too phased by the fact that, you know, his house seems to have been, you know, broken into and ransacked. Uh, but then, you know, he knows that his wife is missing, and he gets a call on a phone, and you hear John Voight doing a bad faux, I guess, Bulgarian accent. And no joke, it seriously sounds like the fake European accent that Kristen Wiig was doing in Zoolander 2. During the course of this night, you will be given several tasks. If you fail at any, you will never see your wife again. John Voight calls him up, tells him to find this car located in a parking garage close by. Ethan Hawke gets down there, beats up some valet, takes the keys, and it's this super sweet model Mustang. I gotta say, this movie's a great Mustang commercial because this model Mustang apparently can face anything. There is so much debris and shit that it hits all throughout this movie, and it's untouched. It's like a tank. It's the tank of Mustangs. The car was previously owned by Selena Gomez, who mentions that the car was stolen like two days before the events of the movie started. Uh, so she finds the car, tries to take it back, then she ends up getting swept along for the ride with Ethan Hawke, and uh, they have the most awkward chemistry together. Stop doing that. Why? Okay. Why? Because this guy is watching us, okay? And I need you to I stop. Know what I'm Just doing. sit still and listen to me for two seconds, I know okay? What I'm doing. Ethan Hawke is basically playing your garden variety action movie hero. He's like the poor man's John McClane, poor man's Jason Bourne, that kind of thing. Barely talks, doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue. Most of it goes to Selena Gomez, for better or for worse. Here's the thing. I don't hate Selena Gomez. I grew up watching Wizards of Waverly Place every so often on Disney Channel, like when I was in middle school. And 
I thought she was okay in that. And when it comes to her being in those Hotel Transylvania movies, she's all right in those too. It kind of goes to show that Selena Gomez, when she tries to be in stuff that's not really, you know, in her lane. And I totally get it from her perspective. I mean, you know, you're a young actor. You probably want to branch out and do other genres, not just stick to the same thing over and over. I'm totally fine with that. The problem is Selena Gomez being in this action movie, I, I don't really buy it. I mean, keep in mind, this was a year or two after she was in that piece of shit Spring Breakers, you know, and she was trying to show the world that she was no longer part of Disney and she was a, a woman now and, you know, being in skimpy clothes as much as possible. Um, it, it's one of those kind of things. It's like, you know, you're in like, you know, kind of stuff like that and then eventually try to move on to do like, you know, something a little bit more big budget and your agent says it'll be a good career move for you, trying something different, being an action movie with Ethan Hawke. Um, the problem is, yeah, Selena Gomez, I don't know what it is. Like, she, she's just not cut out for this kind of movie. It's like, you see her in like a family movie or something, and it's like, oh, she's you know, not great, but she's definitely good in these kind of roles. But this movie right here, it's like, Selena Gomez is not good at this kind of thing. Seeing her running around like, you know, with a tank top and uh, like a fall hoodie, going around trying to carjack, it's like, I, I don't buy that for a second. Get out. Get out now! Do not get out of the car. You heard me, asshole. Get out. That's the other thing. Any chance they got to show her in like a tank top or whatever, because that's pretty much what she wears all throughout the movie. She has a tank top and you know, occasionally she puts on like a hoodie. Um, but they establish that it's Bulgaria and they kind of show everyone wearing clothing that's, you know, for a colder climate. So why she's wearing that other than, oh, she's a female lead in an action movie. That, that's kind of it. And her and Ethan Hawke just have such awkward chemistry together. Ethan Hawke barely does anything other than just drive, because like I said, this movie is nothing but driving. And they try to do that action movie thing where it's like two people start off as complete strangers, and now they've been on this, this wild adventure together, and now, you know, they're in for the long haul. And so eventually near the end, when they finally catch up with John Voight, he kidnaps Selena Gomez, and then Ethan Hawke has to go chasing after them to save her. Another thing about Selena Gomez is they established that she's apparently really good with technology. Not only is she a carjacker, but apparently she went to the same computer hacking school that uh, uh, the main guy from Bigger, Fatter, Liar was in. Second. What? These aren't coming from the same place. Where are they coming from? It looks like a parking garage. Can you tell where it is? No, it could be anywhere. Do you think it's where he might be? I doubt it, but he can see it. I just don't like the fact that he's watching us. Do you think you can track him with that thing? No. And if anyone did, he would just dump the IP address. As long as his feed is hosted remotely, there's no way to find it. He ends up hacking into the car and finding out that, like, it's mic'd and that there's, like, cameras all over the car. That's how John Voight's able to watch them and, and you know, keep track of what they're doing. And I love it. At one point, they decide, hey, maybe we should get out of the car and have this conversation. They get out of the car, and it's like one of the few times they actually stop and we're not just nonstop driving. You can make a drinking game out of how many times John Voight says, I'll kill your wife, how many quick cuts there are, or how many times an explosion happens in this movie. The reason that John Voight wanted him to take this car in the first place was because he basically wanted to start enough panic and have enough collateral damage so that the cops will have to take care of all that and block off all these you know, back roads and streets so that that way he could sneak out of Bulgaria without the authorities noticing him. So yeah, that's the main reason that Ethan Hawke ends up driving into a bunch of like public parks and into oncoming traffic and causing all this collateral damage. And uh, like I said, lots of chase scenes. You know, there's parts where they're trying to dodge cops. They got some gangsters after them. And oh my God, when they do these chase sequences, it's like watching an hour and a half compilation of like TikToks or Vine videos because it's just such quick cuts, quick cuts, quick cuts, quick cuts. Like every shot during one of these scenes does not go on for more than six seconds. And it, it seriously made me feel like I was having a stroke. What are you doing? Is that the camera? Give it to me, give it to me. No, give it to me. <laughs> One scene in Catwoman when Halle Berry was trying to run away from the water in that like that sewer duct thing and then she ends up getting spat out into the ocean and she drowns even that is not as quick cut like as, as all the chase scenes and shit that are in this movie and I found out that apparently they used 40 cameras 
to film these sequences and it makes a lot of sense because it feels like the, the director was like hey we have 40 cameras we're, do, we're gonna film a movie involving car chases and action shots fuck it we're gonna use every camera for this thing if the movie's not boring you with all these like dialogue heavy scenes with ethan hawk going mm -hmm. yeah he's gonna kill my wife oh getting a call john voight we're going to kill your wife if you, unless you do this if it's not that, you know, then they're having these back and forths where she's like, you know, Oh my God, what's going on? This is my car. Oh, asshole, you took my car. Stealing it, you asshole. This is my car. What? You probably don't understand this because you're a criminal. Things in this world belong to people before people like you take them. This car, which was really great till you added all these cameras and shit in it to drain the battery, belongs to me. How'd you find the car? I got a call from a cop saying that he saw my car parked in the garage where I found you. What made you think it was a cop? Because he said so, genius. Mm -hmm. Just remember, back to the thing of Selena Gomez being a master hacker, she apparently built her car so that she could specifically have Xbox in there because there are, like, little Xbox controllers placed in the car, and I swear to God, in one scene you can see that there's an Xbox on the um, the armrest in the middle of the car. So yes, you can recut this movie into the most badass commercial for Xbox or Mustang or Apple because at the beginning of the movie when Ethan Hawke picks up the phone and hears about his wife being kidnapped for the first time, they specifically highlight the fact that it's an iPhone. And uh, Selena Gomez is able to do her master hackery on an iPad. Fast forward to the movie, they try to have a twist where they, they think they captured the criminal behind all this. But you know it's not him, because he sounds nothing like John Voight. So, yeah, they think that it's him. But uh, eventually they realize that's not him at all. And, of course, later on in the movie, they end up finding his wife. And he, she's hidden off in, like, some abandoned, like, airplane hangar somewhere, like, outside of Bulgaria. They basically do the thing in every action movie where, you know, just not a huge brigade of cops show up outside this place. Like, it's it's just one SWAT team away from, like, you know, a SWAT bur burst in, essentially. And uh, John Voight kidnaps Selena Gomez. I love it. Ethan Hawke sees his wife for five seconds and goes, oh, I gotta save that girl. And the cops don't even try to stop him. The cops would usually be like, no, stay with your wife. We got this. We'll get him. Uh, but no, since he's the main character in an action movie, you don't cross him, and he goes after him. Are you all right? I'm okay. Oh, shit. They got the kid. I gotta go after her. Go get her. And I love this. Ethan Hawke chases after John Voight, and he's riding in the Mustang, and John Voight is in an SUV. <laughs> And it's just like, okay, you already established this is like the world's most badass Mustang, apparently. So how the hell does he think he's going to beat him in an SUV? Come on. Point is, they stop the bad guys. Good guys win. It doesn't matter. This movie is really bad. Then again, I'm not surprised that it's really bad because apparently it's from the director of that, uh, that 90s Dungeons and Dragons movie with Jeremy Irons. So what'd you expect? Tell you. In conclusion, it's not a very good movie. I, I honestly didn't really know what to expect going in. I heard bad things about it, but I try to give every movie the benefit of the doubt. Even if it's something that looks really shit, I'm like, all right, I'll try and give it a chance. But by the 20 minute mark, I kind of figured that it was just going to be a lot of hokey dialogue and them just kind of coasting by on the fact that, oh, it's an action movie and, you know, we got a bunch of awesome, badass, practical effects of, you know, cars smashing into each other, which, I mean, yeah, that's cool. I mean, you know, the, especially considering that nowadays everyone just cheaps out and goes for the CG. That's obviously fake. They try to pull a Michael Bay on that kind of thing. I, I guess that was kind of refreshing, seeing a lot of practical effects in that department. It's one of those action movies where, like, most of the movie is just nothing but car chases or shit blowing up to where it's just like, all right, I'm, I'm kind of over this now. It's like, oh, but we got, you know, another hour and a half to go. All right. There was even one explosion in the movie where I'm like, okay, like, I get that it's an action movie and, you know, like, the laws of physics must dictate that in an action movie, if anything collides into something, then it must explode. But there's this one part where there's a guy on a, on a dirt bike and he crashes into, like, a pillar and it causes this massive explosion. And I'm just like, what was that thing made out of nuclear warheads? Like, there's no way that that would have caused that big of an explosion. Oh. At mo 
most, the guy either would have had the worst case of whiplash or got decapitated, and the dirt bikes would have broken to a bunch of pieces. You know, maybe there would have been a lot of property damage on that, but I don't know if it would have caused that big of an explosion, but whatever you say, movie. It's far from the worst thing I've ever sat through. And in fact, in terms of like really crappy movies put out by big studios, because this was put out by Warner Brothers, um, you know, and a movie that had a pretty decent sized budget, uh, and, and, you know, recognizable people. I mean, you got name actors like Ethan Hawke and John Voight and Bruce Payne is in it for like five minutes. Um, but yeah, like even in that department, it's like, this isn't the worst thing ever. It's just kind of boring. And, you know, the, the action eventually gets boring and the dialogue is just kind of boring. Um, it's not Manos boring because, you know, you got all this action shit going on and they pretty much have shit blow up every like 10 or so minutes or even less than that, probably every seven minutes. But after a while, it's just like, all right, I'm kind of done with this. Next time I do a dumb, cheesy action movie, I seriously gotta find one from like the 80s because there's so many of those, and I guarantee you those probably would have been more entertaining than this. Because from what I see from a lot of these cheesy 80s action movies that people review on YouTube, a lot of the times, the ones from the 80s and maybe early 90s are the ones that are so absurd that they're hilarious. Nowadays, we got things that are like, you know, at least somewhat professional. I mean, you know, most of the Born Identity movies, like those are, you know, professionally made. And it's not even as entertaining as one of the Fast and Furious sequels. Like there's there's no part where the car latches onto a bridge that's collapsing under it. There's, there's nothing absurd like that. It's just, like I said, just kind of boring action after a while. Next time we're looking at a dumb horror movie and uh, I'm a little nervous because it's a black and white movie. Not that I have anything against black and white movies. I, I really enjoy them when they're done well. Uh, but this one, I hear it's, it's kind of dumb, which I'm not surprised. Uh, I mean, I, from what I gather, there was an MST3K episode done about it. So, all right. Uh, the movie is called The Screaming Skull. So we'll get to see what kind of stupid shit happens in that. But until then, I'm Adam Sykes of The Blockbuster Show and we will see you guys in the next video. Seriously though, watch one of the chase scenes on YouTube and see how many quick cuts happen. You can make a drinking game out of that. Yeah. Hey. Do you intend on shutting the